Hi, this is Miss Litton, and this is my wonderful, excellent, glorious period three A pi. Oh shoot! <laughs> AP Biology class. Say hi. Hi. All right. So we have already discussed the light dependent reaction. So now we're going to do the light independent reaction. Perfect. To get us set for that, let's take a look at this picture for a minute. In your mind, don't say it out loud yet. Come up with just the reactants for the light reaction. Reactants for the light reaction. If you had to write about that, what are the reactants? Think them in your head. Youngest bio buddy, tell oldest bio buddy. What are the reactants for the light reaction? All of them. Okay, tell me. What are the reactants? Water, I agree. What else? Light. What else? Do we use any carbon dioxide in the light reaction? No. Not, we don't need it yet. But what else do we need in order to do our light reaction? We need a, we need a DP, good, right here. What else do we need? Oxidized NADP. Now these are gonna cycle. We're gonna make reduced NADP and ATP. So that's why you don't see them in the reaction because they just get recycled. They're temporarily made and consumed and made and consumed, okay? So all of these things, and you know where they come into play. Why is water a reactant? What does it provide for us? It does, it provides hydrogen ions to contribute to our chemiosmotic gradient, yes? So we get hydrogen ions inside here, a bunch of them. What else does it provide for us? What else is it a source of? Electrons, what do we need the electrons for? Yeah, to produce the reduced NADP. So these two electrons right here ultimately came from right here, the hydrogen ion of water, yes? Okay. So we also, as these hydrogen ions move back out into the stroma, what can we make? ATP. ATP. All right, we good on that? Now, here in the Calvin cycle, we have another reactant. What are our reactants for the Calvin cycle? CO2. CO2, okay. So this is just C, and are there, right? We wouldn't call that being reduced yet, right? Okay, so we're gonna take the CO2 and feed it in here, and we're gonna give it some electrons. Where are those electrons coming from? Yes, so these electrons right here, oh, darn you electrons. These electrons right here, 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 are gonna be given to this CO2 in order to form sugar, CH2O. So it was just carbon and oxygen, and then when these electrons get given to it, it's gonna be CH2O. So the CO2 got what? Reduced or oxidized? Reduced. Reduced, right? Now, once NADP gives up those two electrons it has, then it's just NADP oxidized and it can get reused in the light reaction again, yes? Okay, and then in order to do this process, that requires energy and we made that in the light reaction as well. Yes? Where do, where do the oxygens from the CO2 go? They're still part of that carbohydrate. Still part of that carbohydrate. Okay, so um, let's look specifically at the three parts. I know this is tiny. There are three components to um, the light independent reaction. So the first one right here, here is, un, you can't see it, so sorry. Let's go with, let's go with here is CO2 fixation. So you're taking CO2 out of the air and you're making it into a solid. You're fixing it, okay? And when you fix it, you're fixing it um, to something called RUBP. RUBP is a C5 molecule. It has hydrogens and it has oxygens on it, okay? But I'm just following the carbons right now. It is a C5. CO2, how many carbons in CO2? How many carbons in CO2? One, okay? So when you have a C5 plus a C1, what will you get? C6, okay? Three C5 plus 
3C1 makes 3C6. That's the hardest part of your next song. Okay, that's the hardest part right there. Okay, all right. Now, when you form the C6 molecule, okay, it is very unstable. So it breaks in half, each one. And we are gonna have three of these and three of these just for accounting purposes. Okay, and we will have three of these as a result. This takes us to step two, CO2 reduction. Oldest bio buddy, explain to youngest bio buddy, what are the ways you can get reduced? Go ahead. Okay, so tell me, how can a molecule get reduced? It can what? Gain hydrogen, gain electrons, gain energy, right? So, can we give that CO2 some electrons? Yes. Who are we going to get them from? We're going to get them from NADP, and we're going to have the energy to do it because we also have some what? ATP. And so you're going to give them some energy. That's the CO2 reduction part. So first was CO2. What is the first thing we did? CO2 fixation. The second part is CO2 reduction. Now, when we end up doing this, we will make six high energy molecules that are really half of a glucose. Okay, they're called G3P, or old school name is PJL. It's a half of a glucose. If I have six halves of glucose, how many glucose molecules do I have total? Three. Okay, so I have six, I'm holding six. What you end up doing is you take one of those halves, siphon it off the top, just one, one half of a glucose, and you send the five to keep the party going. And you let them continue on. And guess what they're going to be? We're going to recycle them back into this first compound. This first compound is called RUBP. Now, RUBP is like a naughty little boy, okay? There's more to this story. I'm just not explaining it because this. <laughs> but RUBP, okay, is supposed to hook up with if RUBP is being good, it's supposed to hook up with carbon dioxide. But if given the opportunity, it will be naughty and hook up with oxygen. That's called photorespiration that we kind of mentioned earlier and we're gonna revisit it. Photorespiration isn't photosynthesis, it isn't cellular respiration. It's like you're in your car and you're stepping on the gas and just spinning your wheels. It doesn't get you anywhere. And so RUBP, we're gonna look at some adaptations plants have to protect this, because it's the first step. Because it's the part, RUBP is supposed to hook up with CO2, we reduce it, we have some ATP, and we make these halves of glucose, we siphon one off and we reform RUBP. We want that RUBP to do this whole thing all over again, hooking up with CO2 again, and when it does that, well now the second time through, We'll pull off another half of a glucose. So we had a half, we had a half, now we have a whole. Okay? So this part here is the regeneration. Part one was CO2 fixation, part two was the reduction, and part three is regeneration, regenerating that RUVP. Now I'm going to show you another picture. Take a look at this one. Okay, take a look. Okay, look for things you recognize. Here's RUBP. The red balls represent carbon. How many carbons in RUBP? Five. <laughs> How many of these RUBPs do we have? Three. Three, what is it? Tell me again. Three C5 plus three C1 makes three C, and then go like this, six. Do just that much with me right now. It's good. That's the hardest part of this whole next song. Go again. Here we go. Three C five plus three C one makes three C six. Perfect. Okay. Now, those three C sixes all break down. So instead, now you have six C what? Three. Okay, 
And now we're going to give them some power. We've got some ATP here. We have some reduced NADP. And now you're going to form six. It looks exactly the same as before, right? Okay, you can't see it, okay? But you're actually giving it energy right here. And it's called PGAL is the old school name. Um, newer name is G3P. So you want to go G3P. So you remember that one. Like, yay, G, yay, we finally made it. This right here, we have six halves of glucose. We're going to siphon one off. So now I'm going to take one of these G3Ps away. How many will I have left? Five, so now I have five. Five, and how many carbons are in each G3P? Three. And I have five of them. What's five times three? Fifteen. I'm going to use some ATP. Now I'm making three C5s. What's three times five? Fifteen. Do you see how the carbons are all accounted for? Okay, I'm going to show it to you one more time. Whose turn is it, young or old? Let's not do that. Blue. Blue, take a walk around this circle and start with the RUBP. Go blue. Take a walk around. Do the best you can. just this to be separate from earlier today. Okay, um, can you tell me when you're ready to go? Okay, so now I'm just doing one aspect. I'm going to put this one smaller part just up on YouTube. So I wanted to show it to you one more way, okay? This is third time's a charm for some of you. You're going to get this, right? Okay, so here's RUBP. Some of you are like, I already have it. Here's RUBP. How many carbons are in each RUBP? Five. Five. How many of them do I have? Three. Three. Okay, so each one of these RUBPs is going to hook up with a CO2. So there's five plus one is what? Six. And then here's another one going to hook up with another CO2. Five plus one is six. And here's one more. Okay, when it does that, I know that looks complicated. We now, instead of having three C5s and some C1s, we have three C6. Six. But they're unstable. It's kind of like when you hook that CO2 on, they're like, oh, and it breaks apart. So now, instead of having three C6s, what do we have? Six what? C3. Okay? So we had three C5 plus three C1, and that gave us three C6s. Then each of those broke in half, so now we have six C3s. Now we're going to use some ATP, use some ATP, use some reduced NADP on these six C3s. Move that over. One, two, three. Oh, I gave myself a bonus. Okay. One, two, three, four. Okay, six. So now we have six high energy molecules, each of those is a half of a glucose, okay? So I have six of them. I'm going to just take one of those away and siphon it off. So this is a half of a glucose right here. There we go. And its name is G3P. How many do I have left here now? Five. Five, okay? And each one of them has three carbons in it, right? What's five times three? Fifteen. I'm going to rearrange these molecules. If I'm going to do some rearranging, it's going to cost me some what? <coughs> ATP. So now I'm going to use some ATP and rearrange them right back into the RUBP again. Now I have three C5s. If I do this whole thing all over again and make another six PJLs or G3Ps and siphon off one again, 
Now I have two halves of glucose, which is one whole. glucose, one whole glucose. Okay? Good, thanks. Okay, what was your question? Okay, perfect. Okay, now, whoever, was that helpful? Okay, whoever explained the last one, it is your turn to explain this one. Let me see one second, let me put it back. Okay? And um, you can eat, uh, you can take turns each step, I don't care. Do it, I'll move the pieces and you do the talking. Okay? Go. And now you're adding cycles where it will make one glucose and look at the big picture of that you're really putting three through at a time right but you're getting a total of six carbons that are part of that glucose okay now I wrote it yet one more way okay with the song involved okay I'm gonna walk you through it and then we'll, we'll learn the rest of it so you start right here at RUVP and that is a 3C what five plus a 3C1 is going to make a 3C6. This is unstable, so it breaks in half into 6C3s. Then you're going to use some ATP, use some reduced NADP on your 6C3. You're going to take one away, PJL, and you're left with 5C3. We're going to use some ATP to build 3C5 plus 3C1 makes 3C6 break down to 6C3. Use some ATP, use some reduced NADP on your 6C3. Take one away, but now we've done it twice, so we've now got a glucose, and you're left with 5C3, use some ATP to build 3C5, stop. Yes, question. Yeah. Okay, so listen to the question in case it's yours. I don't understand how three carbons makes half a glucose. Okay, remember these carbons really have what else attached to them? Hydrogens and oxygens. Um, I'm just following the carbons. You don't have to keep like <laughs> where the bonds are. You don't need to know all that. I'm just showing you the carbons. Yeah, thank you. Okay, yes. Uh, does the ATP come from the breaking down of the three C6s? Or is that just from? The ATP came from the light reaction. The light reaction. And you make some ATP. That's where you got it. And this is why you need it. So you can rearrange these bonds. You're going to give them a phosphate. That's leveling them up. They went from low energy to high energy. You level them up with the phosphate molecule. You level them up by giving them electrons from the reduced NADP. What else? Okay, let's learn this song. Ready? You already know the first line of it, okay? Three, C, five. Tell me its name. What is this? R U V plus three C one. I need a name. C two. Good. Makes three C six. Okay, you don't need to know that one. Okay. So you're here, and you're gonna leave. Freeze your fingers in this position, and you're gonna go break down. Break down. Two, because it's breaking down two, and then bring them right back up. Break down to six. See, we're all in the right spot. C, three. Okay, from the top. Three, C, five. Plus three, C, one. Makes three, C, six. Break down to six, C, three. Now go grab it. Use some ATP. 
use some reduced NADP on your 6C3. Can you do that with me again? Use some ATP. Use some reduced NADP on your 6C3. Take one away. Remember we skim one off the top? Go PGAL. The other name for it is G3P. G3P. And that's how you remember. G3P. Okay, PGAL. Then go like this. Jazz hands. The reason why we have to do jazz hands is when you come back, Okay, you take one away, PJL, jazz hands. And you're left with six, six, five, C, three. Use some ATP to build three, C, five, plus three, C, one. Makes three, C, six. Break down to six. C3. Use some ATP. Use some reduced NADP on your 6C3. Take one away. But now we've done it twice, so we have a glucose. See, like that. Glucose. So the second time through, that's what you say. Do it again. Take one away. Glucose. And you're left with 5C3. Use some ATP to build three C five stop. Breathe. Okay. Now let's check our notes on that. Okay, so go to your notes. Okay? And then we'll go all the way through top to bottom. Okay. Um so plants fix carbon dioxide. Um, I did the ATP production or did I skip over it? We only did one? Yeah. Dang it. Okay, so let's let's go back to that. ATP production. This generates an electrochemical gradient that is used to generate ATP through a process called chemiosmosis. Called chemiosmosis. Hydrogen ions move from a higher concentration to a lower concentration in the stroma using an ATP synthase complex channel. ATP synthase complex channel. All right, overview. Plants fix carbon dioxide. It is a series of reactions producing carbohydrates. Okay, number two, um, blue, tell them what it requires. Go blue, tell them right now. Slate, give them the names. Okay. Fixation of carbon dioxide. Now notice, look at step one, step two, step three. Step one is all about the fixation, getting the CO2 hooked up with RUVP. Step two is all about the reduction, giving it energy, giving it electrons. And step three, what's the key word there in step three? Regeneration. Regeneration, good. So in step one, fixation of carbon dioxide, each CO2 molecule binds to a five carbon molecule called RUVP, forming a what carbon molecule? Six. Six. This is achieved using the enzyme RUBP carboxylase. Another name for RUBP carboxylase is Rubisco. Probably the most common protein in the biosphere. Probably the most common protein in the biosphere. We are taking this C5, we are hooking it up with a CO2. Right here, it says Rubisco. There's an enzyme that catalyzes that process, okay? And why would it be the most common enzyme protein in the living biosphere? Why? Breaking my heart inside, tears crying. What is this process we're doing, my peoples? Photosynthesis. Who's at the bottom of the food chain? 
plants, doing what process? Photosynthesis, supporting all the heterotrophs and consumers out there, yes? Can you see why this is an important reaction? Not only is it producing sugars, but it's also the process on the whole is producing what gas? Oxygen, to make this an aerobic uh, environment, right? We're in an oxidizing environment, okay? This is why this is the most important and the most prevalent of all proteins, okay? Because you're doing this with it. All right, super scary. Okay, um, each newly formed six carbon molecule breaks in half, and here it's, it's broken in half name. I'm, you don't have to memorize, 3PG or PGA. Step two, reduction of carbon dioxide. Each of these is given a phosphate from ATP. <coughs> then each is what by NADPH? What's the word that you want to put there? Reduced. Reduced by NADPH. At this point, you siphon off one G3P, half of a glucose, and send the five remaining G3P to step three. Regeneration of RUBP, you use three ATP to, um, to rearrange the remaining five G3P into three RUBP. Oh my gosh, how many letters can you have? I understand that's difficult, so you just have to get the key things here, okay, so that the cycle can continue. When the cycle has occurred two times, so we go through the cycle twice, when the cycle has occurred two times, each starting off with three CO2, you will have invested a total of how many carbon atoms when you do this twice? Six, six right? So six carbon are gonna come in and six carbon are gonna come out. Look to me. Six carbon come in as what? What did they come into this as? They came in as CO2. Six individual carbons, right? CO2, carbon with two oxygens. Six individual carbons came in. What came out? Glucose. Six carbons all hooked together. What do you call it when, you, when it's one carbon hooked to another? You call that a what? A bond. And bonds equal energy. And what holds bonds together? What are you sharing? Electrons. Where did you get those electrons from? <coughs> Ultimately from water. Who had them temporarily? Reduced NADP. Okay, have you got that? That's where those bonds came from. Okay, exactly. All right, so um, you had da, 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 six carbon atoms, and then how many ATP did we use for this whole thing? Six. You used six right here, and three right here. That makes nine. You did it how many times? Two times, so how many did you use? 18 ATP. How many NADPH did you use? How many reduced NADPH? Six a turn. So that's a total. You do it twice. How many is that? Twelve. To form those two G3P, which can be used to form one glucose. All right, people, putting it all together. Light, dependent, light, independent from the top. Breathe. Okay, you ready? Okay. Get your watering can. Here we go. Think each step you're doing. It will help you later if you know what you're doing and why you're doing it. Okay, here we go. Water, 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 water. What are we going to do? Break it in half. What do we get? Oxygen and electrons. Sweep, sweep. Here comes the sun traveling in waves. Particles of light are called photons. And it gets the electrons excited. Ana, 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 ana. P, Q, and you make some ATP. Mm. Here comes the sun traveling in waves. Particles of light are called photons. And it gets the electrons excited. Ananana, who catches it? NADP forming reduced NADP. Then you take some ATP and some reduced NADP to the dark reaction or the Calvin cycle or the light independent reaction. 3C5 plus 3C1 makes 3C6. Break down to 6C3. Use some ATP 
use a reduced NADP on your 6C3. Take one away, PGAL or G3P. Jazz hands. And you're left with 5C3. Use some ATP. Two build, 3C5 plus 3C1 makes 3C6. Break down to 6C3. Breathe. Use some ATP. Use some reduced NADP on your 6C3. Take one away, glucose. And you're left with 5C3. Use some ATP. 2 build, 3C5. Stop. Yay! <laughs> now, that whole thing, I did it. They recorded that once today, the whole thing, so you can see that. Okay, it's out here. Now, that, you know, I want to tell you something. About that G3P, I had you take two of them together, and after the second time, what did you build? Glucose. Glucose. But you don't have to, okay? You could use it to make fatty acids. You could use it to make amino acids. You could use it eventually form with some fructose and make some sucrose, or you could store it as starch, or you could store it as you could use it as cellulose structurally. So this G3P is the starting, the jumping off point for everything that plant's going to make. Okay, everything that plant's going to make. So on your notes, the importance <coughs> of photosynthesis, G3P is the first reactant of several different plant products. The first reactant of several different plant products. Slate, tell them what all those products are. They're listed for you right there. And then you get to be alive. Okay? Now, the next part, oh, here, you got a question. Yeah, you literally just learned this. <laughs> Somebody already did not, not, so not, not so so Damn it, Ori. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. Was it one of the Anishas? deal with is not something that is mandated for the AP exam okay but here is what something you have to do you want to give examples of evolutionary adaptations and this is one you could use as an example it's easy to understand okay and all of it has to do with avoiding a process called photorespiration now here is that naughty little boy see he's got his name on his shirt can you see it it's very tiny what is his name his name is REVP Okay, and sometimes he gets put in timeout, literally. Okay, and the reason is he is supposed to bind with who? Who is he supposed to bind with? He's supposed to bind with CO2, but sometimes who does he hook up with? Oxygen. Oxygen. That is bad. That is called photorespiration. Not helpful to the plant at all. So there are some adaptations to avoid that. So looking at your notes, photorespiration when it is hot, the stomata close. And why would your stomata close? To conserve what? Water. Water. So now think about it. You have all this light. You're doing a bunch of photosynthesis. What gas is consumed during photosynthesis? 
Carbon dioxide, what gas is produced during photosynthesis? Oxygen. So RUBP is tempted all over the place, right? Because there isn't a lot of CO2, and here is all this oxygen, but I can't open the doors to get more CO2 or let the O2 out because I'm afraid I'm going to lose too much what? Water. So, yeah, it's his fault, okay? But he didn't know the candy jar was right there, okay? So he ends up getting tempted. So um, oxygen builds up in the interior of the leaf, and it competes with CO2 for RUBP. This is an inefficient process called photorespiration, and you can use up as much as 50% of the carbon that would be fixed by the Calvin cycle. Half of it. So I'm gonna give you two strategies to avoid that. To understand those strategies, let's look what is normal. Okay, these are C3 plants, normal plants. In their leaves, in, there's still the light reaction. It's just showing you the light independent reaction. Here comes CO2, it is supposed to hook up with RUVP. That's what's supposed to happen. Okay, but sometimes O2 can get in here. So, look at these two plant leaves. This is standard. This is called a C4 plant. This is a cross section of the leaf. Youngest bio buddy, listen as your oldest bio buddy tells you differences between these two leaves. Go ahead. So, these are plant cells. The bundle sheet cells, they go around the vein of the plant leaves, which is like their circulatory system. It's their xylem and their phloem is right there, okay? And these bundle sheet cells, what they're doing is they are physically separating and doing in a different area in the plant, isolating the um, dark reaction, the light independent reaction, separating it and, I, and um, insulating with these other mesophyll cells and inside these other mesophyll cells is a substance called PEP, and PEP is super loyal. And PEP only hooks up with CO2, and PEP will escort in the CO2 to these bundle sheet cells in the center here and drop off CO2, and that's where they're doing their dark reaction, their light independent reaction. And so all RUVP is ever exposed to is to CO2. Now that's gonna take extra energy, that extra step. So it's gonna cost you, but it must, the benefits must outweigh the cost, right? So it can be more efficient in, in certain situations. Look at here. So we've added on a layer. So here's CO2. It hooks up with something called PEP and it forms C4. And when it does that, it drops the CO2 off. So that CO2 is initially fixed by a different molecule. So on your notes, um, if you go to C4 plants, an adaptation to avoid photorespiration, it is a partition in space. Partition in space. So their bundle sheath cells surrounding the leaf veins are larger and photosynthetic and surrounded by their mesophyll cells arranged in a ring and forming a layer of insulation. The mesophyll cells use PEP, to initially fix the CO2, and PEP is loyal. It only hooks up with, CO, with the CO2. PEP escorts it into the bundle sheet cells, it releases it to RUBP, and returns from another load. Um, it costs energy, but is advantageous in hot, dry climates. Why? Hot and dry. So they're closing their what? Stomata. Stomata. Okay. And the summary, the light-dependent reaction occurs in one cell, and the light-independent reaction occurs in another more isolated cell that has carbon dioxide escorted to it using PEP. Youngest bio buddy, talk right now. Talk about these C4 plants. What's going on? Go ahead, put it in your own words. How is this an adaptation? Okay, so this is an adaptation, an adaptation if you're more likely to do photographs.
photorespiration. So let's look at another one. These are called cam plants. Very, very similar. Except these are desert plants like succulents. And what they do is they only open up their stomata at night because in the desert it's really what? Hot during the day. So they're just like, no, we're not even opening the doors at all. Forget it. Okay? And they open their doors at night and they have CO2 come in and PEP fixes it for them at night. Fix, fix, fix at night. And it kind of builds it all up. And then during the day when their doors are closed, they can release it as needed. Okay? to the RUBP. So as the O2 levels build up, it's like, it's okay, we got, it's okay, buddy. Here's all this CO2, okay? And it releases the CO2 during the daytime um, from the PEP. So this is not a partition in space. This is a partition in time, okay? A partition in time. Fix CO2 at night to PEP when the stomata can afford to be open. Release it during the day, once the light-dependent reactions begin. Photosynthesis is minimal, but it allows cam plants to live with their stomata closed during the day. Closed during the day. So let's look at how photosynthesis has adapted to their environment. Slate does one, blue does two, I'll pick you up on three, go. Go, go, go. Okay, so can plants are better than both when conditions are extremely dry and arid. Dry and arid. Okay, I have a bunch of clicker questions here. I'm just gonna give you a few because we need to move on. In the stroma. 
Mitochondria? <laughs> that cellular respiration. Right now, check some numbers. Check some flicker. Wow, Corey. Can I pull up your game, please? Step it up. This is varsity. Let's go. Make good choices. Don't stay up too late. <coughs> 